Des here with the next of our how-to's. We're going to have a little chat about anchoring, how to anchor in reasonably normal circumstances, things to think about. We're also going to have a little go at anchoring with two anchors, either in a Y formation, which might be a good idea if you need to anchor but you're not in an ideal position, and we'll have a little look at anchoring with a fore and aft. So if you're in somewhere that's quite narrow, particularly in the med, sometimes the callers are quite narrow and you need a fore and aft anchor, so that you don't swing and crash into anybody. A few little things we need to think about. Firstly is the environment. What's the wind doing? So what's it doing right now? And what's it going to do later? Well, all that depends on how long you're going to stay. So today we've got a really quite light but onshore breeze. So that would be okay for lunch while we're on the boat monitoring it, but we wouldn't want to leave it for a long period. But the wind's due to go round to the south later and that would mean this little anchorage here, which faces east, would be really sheltered later on. So it would be nice and flat and pretty safe for an overnight if we wanted to. So it's always weather now, weather later on. Next thing we've got to think about is how much water there is. How much do we want to anchor in? We're in a tidal area, so is the tide rising or is it falling? And if so, by how much? Because that will affect how much chain we put out, either for a short or a longer stay. So there's quite a bit of homework to do. Other things, we need to look at local regulations. Are we allowed to anchor here? Are there eel grass beds or is there mussel pots or is there something that we should be aware of? And also, is there a prohibited area that might be underwater pipeline? So a little bit of research before you actually anchor is really sensible. And anchoring is becoming a little bit more interesting as there's more concern about the damage to the seabed that everybody dropping large lumps of metal on the bottom can do. So we need to be aware of how we're anchoring, are we being ecologically friendly as well. So do your homework first, almanacs, charts, books, all fantastic. I've got a chart here and we'll just have a quick look and show you what our concerns are. So I've chosen this little spot down in the bottom of this bay here. We came past the fish farm on our way in, so we're nicely clear of that. And we've got a very light easterly wind, so it's blowing us onto this bit of shore. The yeah, wind's due to go round to the south later, so we'd be nice and sheltered. So ideal for an overnight if we wanted to stay that long. With a lee shore, i.e. we're being blown onto the shore, we have to be very careful because if anything goes wrong, we'll end up on the beach. So we need to think about that. But we're okay for a short anchor here, not a problem at all. Seabed's nice and sandy and there's no prohibited areas and there's no uh, large vessels coming through. So nice little spot. So when we approach the anchorage, wind direction is key and our flag tells us what the wind's doing quite happily on the stern of the boat, but also any other boats that are in the anchorage already, they're giving you a clue as to how they're going to sit. So going back to getting the boat balanced, we want to approach into those elements, whether it's wind type, whatever we've got, and we're going to lower our anchor at the top of that hill, if you like. So our anchor's going to be over on our port side. We're going to let the cable out until we've got enough out. We're in about four metres of water, so we want sort of 15 to 20 metres of chain, all chain on our boat here. We're going to lower that manually on the winch, let the anchor drop, and then dig it in with a little click of a stern just to make sure we've got good holding. So I'm ready to anchor. I've just brought my boat gently head to wind. And looking to the side and judging it against the other craft, I can see that I'm pretty stationary fore and aft. I'm in just about four meters of water, so I'm just gonna start lowering the anchor. And I've got to think about, it's gonna be four meters of chain before it even touches the seabed. So on that, it's about 15 seconds on my boat. And I reckon we're just about anchor on the seabed now. So I've just gone neutral. I'm just seeing what's happening. Okay, going to let more out now. Because I'm in four metres of water, we use all chain four times. So about 
15, 16 metres of water. So I'm going to let some more chain out now. A little pause was to let it just stabilise because I don't want to put all the chain on the top of the anchor. Now I'm going to stop again and have a little click of a stern because I want to lay that anchor chain along the seabed. So a little click of a stern. I can see the bow of the boat come round to where the anchor is. More chain now. See my little bit of wash on the water where I went to stern? That's all looking good. Stop there. Just let it all settle for a moment. We'll have one more click astern just to make sure the chain's paying out nicely. When I look forward there, I can see it's reasonably tight. So I'm going to let just a wee bit more chain out so that I'm nice and happy that it will stay here while I'm having my nice bit of lunch. So here we go. Going to go stern once more. Because I want to just lay this chain along the seabed. And just when I go astern this time, we can see the bow of the boat dip. There it dips, back to neutral. And that real tightness shows me the anchor's really nicely dug in. And the clutch just turned a fraction there, which is good. That shows me that it's not too tight. So if we started to drag, I'd hear the clutch moving, which is really good. So now we've got it dug in. If we were going to stay, we'd put our anchor ball up. Nice black round circle, lets everybody else know we're at anchor. And now I do some transit. So I take objects to my side and something on my bow to see if I was sweeping back and forth or drifting in towards the shore. So what we've got at the moment is we've dropped our anchor head to wind and then we've just laid out our chain along the seabed, got our boat nicely anchored, we've pulled it tight and the boat then has just moved forward as the weight of that chain has just put us into a nice state of equilibrium. Now, supposing for whatever reason, we didn't want to leave this anchorage, might be a storm coming or something like that, and we think, well, we need to stay, then we need to think about, would we be safe? Well, we're on a lee shore, so it wouldn't be ideal. How could we help that? Well, we could put two anchors out. So to do that, what we need to do is gently motor our boat forward, and then off to, in this case, I'm going to go to starboard, and we're going to drop a second anchor there. And then what will happen is, We'll let that one out and then we'll pay in a little bit on this one and we'll end up with that situation with the boat anchored on two anchors in a Y shape. So I'm just going to move the boat forward a little bit and then off to starboard so that I can drop my anchor off to starboard and then drop back on it. So we'll end up with that nice Y formation. We're just very gently there, just taking up on the anchor now I'm going to walk forward. So I'm slightly ahead of my first anchor. Now I'm going to let my second anchor down. That's now on the seabed. So I'm going to pay out. And I've got 15 metres of chain on this. There's my 15. And now we're just going to go through to 20. There's my 20. Make it off on the cleat. So now when I drop back, I'll have one over here, which I've just done manually. My first one I put down with the ankle inch. Let it drop back and I should be cut in a nice Y formation, hold me nicely with double anchors. So same as before, I'm just going to do a little click of a stern, just to settle my boat on the anchors. What I can do is once I'm happy that I'm fairly settled with both, I can lengthen or shorten each particular line so that I've got about the same set on each. So we've got about 20 out 
on the second anchor and I was ahead of the first anchor. So with a bit of luck, it'll be approximately the same. We shall see. So now I'm just going forward, having positioned my boat and I'm just looking down here now and I can see I've got a little bit of tension on this one and I've got a little bit of tension on this one. I can see that anchor's going off in that direction and I can see that anchor's going off in that direction. So if I now wanted to make it a little bit more secure, I can just bring in a little bit on this one. There's the chain. I'm going to let that out a wee bit. We'll have a bit of a stern and bring them up tight. And hopefully there, you can just see a little bit of tension on both those anchors. There we go. Brilliant, happy with that. So we showed you how we did the Y and we ended up with the boat there with both anchors taut and then we can let a bit of slack out so we sit there really comfy. What about when we want to do fore and aft? So the first thing I've done is I've let all air chain out so we're all the way really aft on the anchor and now I'm going to let the stern anchor out here and then I'm going to just very gently edge the boat into a head and I can winch at the same time. So we're going to leave the stern anchor here and winch it on the bow anchor. So I end up pretty much in my original position, but with an anchor ahead and an anchor astern. And that allows me to have both ends held taut. So I won't now swing. So if we were in a very narrow color and we didn't want to crash into anybody else, we can pin ourselves fore and aft. Marvellous for an overnight, no worrying about swinging, no worrying about crashing into anybody else. One word of caution, if there are other people and they don't do the same, they'll swing and you won't, so they might crash into you. So just bear that in mind. So this is marvellous if you're in somewhere narrow and if other people are doing the same. So our second anchor, which we generally call a kedge, we're going to drop that out the stern of the boat and then we're going to gradually ease the boat forward while paying this out. So a little bit shallower because we're a bit closer to the shore so we'll let it in and I'm just trying to keep it from scratching the boat to blazes. There goes the chain, that's all on the bottom now. Let the rest of the chain out. Just coming back to our 20 meter mark. Put that round our cleat. Whole circle, couple of figures of eight. Couple of circles. Always keep your anchor bucket tied on. Move forward. Just gonna winch up a little bit on the winch. Get my helm straight, have a click ahead. That just takes the weight off the winch. Start winching in, just keeping the boat gently moving forward on the winch. Every time the weight comes onto the winch, little click ahead. Just starting to see my line go tall to stern. Little bit of tension there, you can see. We've got a little bit of tension on the stern line. Get a bit of tension on the bow. Let it all settle for a moment. That's pretty taut now. I can just take in a wee bit because I don't want to take any more out the bow because otherwise we won't have enough. Just haul in. See the tension coming on there. That's nice and tight on the stern. Quick up to the bow, see what that's looking like. That's pretty tight on the bow as well. So when we want to bring the anchor up, ideally we don't want the winch to drag the boat to the anchor. So what I've done is I've used the anchor control up at the helm with just little clicks of a head 
just to bring the boat forward until the chain's now almost vertical. So all we've got to do is lift the weight of the last bit of chain and anchor, and that's what the motor's designed for. Now, I can do it from the helm, but I prefer to come forward. There's nobody too close to me, and I can just make sure that A, it's not swinging as it comes out in the water and going to damage the boat, but also that it's going to go into its holder correctly. So I'm just going to continue to come up. See the anchor just there. There it goes taut. If I needed to click ahead, I can do that. But there's no weight on this. Just give it a little wash, get all the junk off. And then most importantly, put your latch back on so that it can't self-release. When anchoring somewhere that's crowded, there's a little trick that you can do so that everybody knows where your anchor is. So you can leave a little marker buoy attached to the crown of your anchor and you let out just enough line to cope with the depth of water. If it's just a depth of water, what will happen is it will stay pretty much above your anchor and that lets everybody else in a crowded anchorage know where you are. It also has another really clever little thing. Because it's tied to the crown end of the anchor rather than the shank, if your anchor was to get trapped on something or caught, you can pull it out by pulling the wrong way, which sounds a bit bizarre. But if we have a look here, normally our anchor is pulled and dug in by this chain going all the way up in that catenary action up to the bow of your boat. And when we go to retrieve the anchor, as the boat comes closer, the line goes more and more vertical, which capsizes the anchor, and out she pops. However, if your anchor gets caught in something, and excuse our simulation, but it'll give you the idea, as we pull tighter and tighter and tighter, we can't release the anchor. Traditionally, what we did was went ahead and tried to pull from ahead, but that still leaves the issue that we're caught on something on the seabed. Now, this could be a cable or a pipeline. Your little marker buoy is attached to the head of the anchor. So now, if you pick this up from the surface of the water, you can pull on the other end, the anchor capsizes, and out she pops.